Welcome to this episode number 57 of your next trade called today all-time high party. So we have the front cover of The Economist. How high can those markets go? Markets are making new highs. We are talking S&P 500, Nasdaq, gold, European markets, Japanese markets. So everything making new highs. We are up between 5 to 20% for the year. Bitcoin cur uh, cryptocurrencies are up 50%. So really, this is a strong uh, a rally where over the last four months, we had roughly 16 weeks up for the S&P out of 18. So very, very strong market. As always, you know, um, as I've been saying, you know, don't fight the market for the time being. It's not point doing it. Uh, you can be doing the way, uh, even if I'm losing a bit of money through that, is through some put spreads, some, some options, why the volatility is still uh, pretty low, you know, around 12, 13, 14% implied volatility, but going straight, net short this market for the time being, you need more people to jump and say, you know, this market will keep on going higher. As we're going to see, um, this market is broadening and you have uh, some uh, flashing reds uh, that are coming with uh, the quality of the moves that we had, especially over the last five days. So what about the year to date um, asset performances? And, and we're going to discuss, uh, so stay tuned because we're going to be talking about options and how to generate great uh, trades looking at the options uh, depth. Uh, so starting with the year to date asset performances now s p is up roughly eight percent same with the with the nasdaq so we are getting closer to the double digit japanese market almost 20 percent so very very strong even europe you know same level as the s p so if you take everything after fx adjusted we do have a very very strong market uh, for stocks 50% for the cryptos now, uh, the months of February saw a lot of uh, ETF um, uh, inflows. Uh, so one of two ETFs had massive inflows, which explain uh, the strong move in, in crypto. Um, uh, Bitcoin is above 60,000. If you look now around the the commodities to the the wti so wti now above 80 so that's something to be uh, keeping an eye on because so far it, uh, it was trading below 80 and around 75 uh, you don't want uh, uh, wti to go uh, too much uh, on the way up why because that means uh, probably you're going to see uh, short-term inflation uh, back in the in in the agenda so what about the week to date you know every week we are going up one percent almost for the s p uh, so this is the minimum interestingly as you can see the russell 2000 is up three percent so um as we're going to see later uh, you had many many industries and, and sectors that outperformed the uh, the overall market so that's a broadening of the of the rally uh, everything is kind of going up these days um, still you know bitcoin and, and crypto outperforming so what about the year to date industry performance the, you see the the biggest outlier which is semiconductors uh, up between 25 and 30 percent so uh, the nvidia of this world have been doing very well based on artificial intelligence the move is still the same winners keep on winning uh, but if we look at the s p which is here you have very few winners, uh, should I say, outperformers uh, versus underperformers at the other end of the spectrum, the names are still the same. What about the week to date industry performance? And this one is interesting because you're going to have the Russell here, you're going to have the Nasdaq here, and you're going to have the, the S&P here. As you can see, many industries outperform uh, the S&P for the week. Interestingly, you can see this, we are talking big performance, okay? We are talking 5% plus for uh, solar, for online retail, for semiconductors again. So uh, what we have for this week, for the last five days, is a broadening of the of this rally. So instead of having only the very few names the, that are driven this market, you know, we are talking the, the Feng, the Fabulous 7, and some others, uh, really everything as kind of moving up. And if you look at the sector's performance, interestingly, as you can see here for the week to date, uh, what we have here that is underperforming is uh, anything that is defensive, okay? Healthcare, utilities, consumer staples. So it's really all in. 
more and more all in uh, where we go uh, where market participants are putting even more money putting aside and not uh, going long uh, anything that is defensive but are going aggressively for it consumer discretionary so very strong market and as i said a broadening of of this uh, of this strength what about the us 10 years the five the the two years and the yield curve so yield curve still inverted at roughly minus 40 bips we are at 4.25 percent so we had the pce which is for inflation uh, which was in line but the market, you know, uh, 10 years is still above the, the trading range, which was 38 to 4.2%. So a bit above um, for the week, we are kind of been flattish for the week. So uh, not much of, of a move. And if you look at the Fed funds expectation, Fed funds rates expectation. So if we look at December here, as you can see, the last is a bit lower than it was at four, uh, when it was at 460 as of last week. So we are expecting the Fed to be a bit more accommodative than it was a week ago. But, you know, not much of difference between one week to another. Now looking through the, uh, through the lenses of the VIX, 13.5% for the VIX, we are still around the same uh, number t t between 12 to 15 percent. Uh, you do have like a, a lot of, of calls that have been bought uh, recently. So the tail on the right hand side is pretty much, you know, people are, are kind of fearing uh, not uh, a crash, uh, but literally a, a big move up. Um, and I think this is important. Why? Because in two weeks time, we got a big Op option expiry so as long as the market is is driven that way with options um, my fear is we could have like another two weeks of of we grind higher the same as we had on friday so let's jump now into the technical analysis so let's start with uh, with broadcom uh, so here what i want to underline is you do have a logarithmic chart and you can see this trend so if you do something as dodgy as this one if i manage to do that okay so you're gonna have you know you can see that this company for the last 15 years has been growing nicely and that explain you know the long-term business so obviously if you switch that chart into regular that looks that looks absolutely ballistic but when a stock is moving that much uh, keep in mind to do a logarithmic chart because otherwise uh, you have the, the the move in dollar terms and not in percentage terms so let's go back into the regular and what we do usually which is you know looking at the s p 500 so we are overshooting above this uh, this this trend uh, really strong market as you can see this is a weekly chart you see how many candles that we have over the last 18 weeks only two were red uh, so very very strong market s p 500 making new eyes uh, 51 uh, 50 roughly for for the s p future close nasdaq same making new highs russell actually going to be soon testing an important level which is the 2100 so keep an eye on this fabulous seven versus the s p still very strong um, now, looking at oil, as we discussed, now we have been breaking. I mean, it's the, 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 we are above the 80. Uh, the, the next big target is, is around this 82, 83. Um, and now looking at copper, copper is not moving. So if you still believe that uh, copper is important for the macro picture, it's still important for China, uh, that tells you that the un underlying uh, um, demand is not that strong. Gold making new highs. 2080 not new eyes in, um, in in during the session but on the close uh, so all those assets making making new eyes i'm interested as well into europe europe's to the stock 600 new highs dax big moves um so if you're trading europe uh, there are some names that have that have, like, tremendous move we are talking siemens we are talking sap um same for other names in europe so very very strong market across uh, regions so now looking back into what we had for the week so as always i'm looking through the s p 500 and what happened over the last five sessions for um, as i said last week we were all waiting for the pce and the pce came out on thursday at 1 30 so this is there uh, pc was in line, the revise was a bit better, so the market um, appreciated the, the numbers. We went up with roughly 30, 40 points on, on that news. But just before, you know, the market was trading sideways. Nothing was really moving uh, in low volume. And then on 
uh, Friday we had the ISM uh, manufacturing, which actually was not that great. So the headline number was bad. The new orders were bad. Inflation was still, you know, above 50. But the market, you know, said, you know, this is a, a, a bad news, but let's take a good news. So these days, bad news, good news, everything is good news for the market. Um, the the ten years move a bit on the on this bad ISM print, and then you know recover to 520, 525. But overall, you know, you. See see the gamma squeeze that happens very very often on Friday where you do have a lot of options that are expiring on a weekly basis and that's driving the market much higher so now I'm interested in something that I discussed over and over I do that in the in the discord community which is you know looking at earnings and as well looking at what how the market is positioned in terms of options um, and we'll be looking here at the option uh, interest, at the open interest of the options. And we take the example of Celsius. So Celsius came with the number that was on Wednesday after the close. So market was expecting the earnings. Earnings results. So uh, Celsius is a beverage company and uh, they beat the numbers. Okay, so they beat the expectation. I think we are talking sales that were around three, 330 million instead of 320, so a bit above. Um, and we are talking a company that is on a market cap of 18 billion something. When we look at the price action here, as you see, you, it started very uh, quite weak on the day uh, below 65 and then it rallied very quickly and then moved even higher into the 80. So you will say why 80? So if you've been doing a bit of work and that's something we've done in the community and we shared um, before the earnings, you if you are looking at the options uh, that were expiring on Friday, uh, most of the, the calls, the big option interest, open interest will have been into 80. So when you have such a big open interest, we are talking 3,000 options more, um, that means that gives you a natural driver, a natural magnet for the stock to go into that region. And guess what? This is where the market went to 80. It overshoot a bit, but really at the end of the day, the close was um, very uh, close to 80. So what we should be doing now if we were to be in trading, is, is the market is very much driven by those options, by those short dated options. Here we are talking weekly options and, you know, looking at the option interest. So we are talking 80 for Celsius. We did exactly the same. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago when in, with NVIDIA, where we spotted that, you know, the 800 level was a big magnet, a big open interest. And guess what? Uh, NVIDIA um, went into 800. So that's for the past um, learning experience and we need to apply what we learn uh, uh, learning for future things so I'm interested as well from the broadening of this uh, rally and this is a pure squeeze where if you look at the five days performance what is really interesting is you know the most short rolling have been outperforming the liquid most short uh, have been outperforming so all the the dodgy names um, that doesn't mean that a dodgy name should not go higher, uh, but the names that where the balance sheet is not that great, the, the fundamentals are not that great, but where you have very high short interest, okay, we are talking CVNA and some other names where short interest will be above 10%, really have been outperforming the market like crazy. We are talking plus 9% for the week when the S&P is up uh, 1%. So that tells you that the market uh, rally is broadening, but as well that we are going more and more for the risky plays. Um, so what about the catalyst going into this week? So on Tuesday, we're going to have the ISM, the PMI services. Um, they have been doing better than the, the manufacturing recently. So the manufacturing on Friday, as I said, was not that great. We had a divergence in our economies between services and, and manufacturing. Another one that we should be keeping an eye, so we get to have Powell, uh, the, uh, uh, the FOMC, the Fed chairman, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, normally the Thursday should be the same as, as Wednesday, but that is in, uh, very important because Powell will be in front of the Congress. He will be asked questions, and obviously this is a market driver going into next week. We do have like the ECB red decision on Thursday. Nothing should, uh, uh, we should not expect any moves, but you know, they should give us more color of what uh, should be happening next. NFP job on Friday. 
and the Fed is pretty much looking at it. So this is an, impor an important one, um, especially if we start to see uh, bad numbers into the NFP. Now, as we just discussed, you know, how to look at open interest, I want to do the same looking at Broadcom. So we discussed the technical analysis of Broadcom. Um, so what and how uh, the market is pricing uh, the move for Broadcom. So more recently, as we can see here, the absolute move on the day uh, for uh, for uh, Broadcom here. So this is those column. Uh, as you can see, it has been moving between three to four percent. So on average, it is moving four percent over the last nine earnings. And what the options are pricing these days, going into those next earnings that will be on Thursday, its market is pricing roughly a 7% move. So implied volatility is above realized volatility, but that's the case most of the time. Um, but what I'm interested in here is the same as what we discussed with NVIDIA and uh, Celsius is looking at how, what is open interest market telling me. So big chunk is around uh, 1300 uh, as of the close of Friday, but we do have a big move here potential at 1400 uh, which will explain as well if you take 1300 to 1400 so the close is here that will give you this six to seven percent move so big open interest at 1400 something to keep an eye because again do for your next id generation if you're looking at a stock especially when they do have earnings look at where the option interest are Finally, looking at what the market is pricing for this week in terms of S&P move is the same as we had over the last few weeks, which is 1.1%. So this is it for me today. Um, uh, as, as I said before, you know, the, the community on Discord, we have three free channels. So it's getting bigger and bigger. I'm putting some content uh, for free. We are talking about options. We are talking, you know, uh, what are the drivers, what has been happening and what's going to be happening on the day. Uh, if you get questions on the 4x4 video series or on one-on-one -on -one sessions through the mentoring, send me an email. So this is my address here. And otherwise, uh, you can reach me on social media. Talk to you soon and have a good trading week.